All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to the webinar. We got started a little bit late, daylight savings time, so my clock was messed up, but we're here. Everything's cool, everything's awesome. I have Molly Hamill here, who is our life coach, and she is gonna help us fix our energy. Thanks for being here, Molly. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome, so my voice is like gone because I was at this huge event this weekend, which was phenomenal, but I'm gonna let you do most of the talking because my voice is like going away right now. Um, but I'm curious, I, I, we went, we're doing this for the better method. We're in week eight of the better method. So we went through the better method, eight cool. week online nutrition course to talk about nutrition, being balanced and just really learning stuff. But I think the thing we forget is the energy piece. So taking time to rest, but then also having some kind of daily ritual. So I'd love for you to kind of help us with that, what you teach your clients, and then what you could tell them, you know, just starting out and setting up like themselves for success for the rest of their journey. Sure. Um, well, I mean, we're all energy. Like, you know, we, we've gone through the, those classes in grade school and everything's energy. And so we're no different. Um, but I think related to food um, and body image and all of that, it's like emotions can be the things that get in the way the most from us, you know eating healthy and staying on track. And when we're not processing, when we don't have healthy ways to process that, we get stuck. And, you know, they say emotion is energy in motion, which is true. We can be like a big ball of chaos or we can be a big ball of, you know, discipline and excitement and everything else. Um, so I, I work with um, mostly people who have like thyroid issues and adrenal issues and stuff like that. And people like that are unrestricted um, eating plans. And I know that when that happened to me, I felt like, you know, my right arm had been cut off because <laughs> all of a sudden I couldn't have like grain, dairy, anything corn, which is basically anything processed, um, alcohol, chocolate. I mean, literally I was like, you know, down to like vegetables and protein. And so that's, that's really hard. And it made me understand how much I was relying on that stuff, even though I felt like I was like a really healthy eater and I was a really balanced person go through that. And it's like a pretty damn fast wake up call about how much you're actually using your emotions and stuff to, um, for eating. So that's when I kind of started integrating a lot of energy and body stuff and energy and emotion stuff. And the bottom line is, you know, I'm trained in a lot of things, but, um, I, I tend to focus on modalities now that people can use that they don't have to be trained in. So for example, I'm like a Reiki master teacher, but I don't really use that anymore because in order to do that on yourself, you have to be trained. So I do a lot of Kundalini yoga because Kundalini um, basically works your chakras, your 10 bodies, your glands, your nervous system and physical and your mind. So it's like kind of everything in one. Um, but I, I rely on that technology a lot because um, there are certain connected to food in certain ways, especially sugar and other things. You know, there's biological reactions going on inside of us. Um, so I like to use energy psychology techniques such as EFT and then meditation to ground and stabilize myself because if I'm not on top of it with that stuff, I'm going to reach for that thing that I know is really bad for me out of an emotional place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I kind of just rambled, but no, I love it. It's perfect. You said a whole bunch of great stuff. So number one, even if we think we're being balanced, like even still, we probably still go to food to get something from it. Like, Oh, I want to go have yeah. wine or I want to go have something. Cause it's, it's fulfilling something in you. Um, yeah. So how did you, and we'll go back to EFT and meditation in a second, because I definitely want to talk about that. Yeah. But how did you, like, here's what I want to make sure people know. Like, whenever somebody's like, oh, Molly's like a life coach, like she's perfect. Like, I want you to take us back to like that time when you were like, F this, like, I want my wine. And you were kind of pissed off that you couldn't have the stuff you had and how you worked through that. Yeah. And I still have those moments like every, you know. Not, not, not too often now, honestly, but I mean, they come up sometimes, you know? Um, so, okay. Your question was when, how, when that started, how I dealt with it. Like, yeah. what was well, like paint a, paint a picture of how you were and like the feelings and emotions that were coming up 
around not being able to have the foods that you probably loved. Yeah, no. I mean, and then what processes you did to say, okay, this is for my health. And so obviously I need to respect that. So, but it's, it's not that easy, right? It's not that it's easy. It's so to boring. Say. No one's going to do anything for their health. Like it's like, so, I mean, yeah. maybe there's like 1% of people out there, but like that does not excite me. Like I take my health for granted. We all do. Like we just expect to go, go, go. Right. And it's yeah. like our bodies are not meant for that. And it catches up at a certain point. I mean, I remember being at, um, you know, we go to happy hour, my husband and I like with some friends on Friday nights. And I remember being like, okay, I'm going to swear. So if your kids are around, like, like mother fuckers, I want to punch you out because <laughs> there was like nothing on the table that I could eat. And then I would like turn into a toddler because I, there was like one, one thing I could eat. Right. And like people would be like wanting a bite and I'd be like, I want to stab you with a fork right now. Like <laughs> get, get back off my food, man. Like you can have the bread. All I got is this little pile of meat, like and veggies, like fucking yeah. stay away. Okay? <laughs> so I really regressed. Like I, I was in no way spiritual. I like literally want to like kill people. Um, and so I, because I say like, my, and I'll talk about it a little bit now, but like this breathing exercise I do, I say it's like a glass of wine because think about the glass of wine on a Friday. We want it to chill out for the, from the week, right? Like we're like stressed out from our week. We want, we want a release. Mm -hmm. So that's what the wine provides. But the wine also provides that boost of energy that we need on a Friday night when we're feeling a little sluggish because the week just kicked our butt or we had like a busy week or whatever, right? So I had to rely on the techniques that I knew and kind of mold them to work for me. Like, so I would go into the bathroom stall when I felt like I was going to stab my friend's hand with a fork and I would do like a one minute breathing that like mm. technique to reset my energy and this stuff works. So I put it to the test because I was like, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I feel so sad that I'm an extrovert. So anyone who's an extrovert from a psychology perspective, we, it's, it's harder for us. Like mm -hmm. introverts naturally go inside and they pay more attention to what their stomach feels like and how full they are. No, like I'll eat the whole table before I realize I'm full because I'm paying attention to whatever, how everyone else is doing. Uh -huh. So as an extrovert, we have that extra challenge. So I would have to like go into the bathroom, do my breathing technique for one to three minutes and then come back out and I wouldn't feel like I wanted to stop my friend anymore. Mm. So it would like literally reset my whole energy field, reset my mindset, give me some space to just tune in and go, okay, what's important right now? And for me, it's not like being healthy motivates me to put down that cheese. No, <laughs> it's about like, I want to feel fierce. Like I want to feel amazing. Mm. Okay. And I want to have the energy to do all of the amazing things that I want to do in life. And so those for me, like I had to go bigger on what was my why of doing this. And if you guys like, for me, like, it's just not about like, Oh, I want to look good in a bikini that for me personally, that's not big enough. Like I'll mm -hmm. still eat bad food, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like yeah. too much or whatever. My why is like, I want a platform, which is my body to be able to do all the amazing things that I want to do. Mm. And the curse of like having adrenal fatigue and, and thyroid stuff is like, you get to that rock bottom of feeling like you have no energy and you, you, you can't do the normal things you would want to do. So that was like the gift in it at the end was like remembering, I don't ever want to go back to that space yeah. of not having energy, my brain being fogged up and everything else. So for me, it's pretty effortless now because I practice these tools every day. I start out my day doing a meditation, a yoga routine for my thyroid, setting intentions, how I want my day to go, what's important to me. Like we, we tend to get so scattered and focus on things that are important. Like what are like the one to three things that I want to accomplish today? Um, what do I know my big, um, sorry, I'm totally losing my thought right now. What, what are my big temptations or, um, weak points going to be in my day. Meaning I know I'm going to an event where I have no control over what food I get to order. It's probably going to be like pizza and a bunch of other things I can't eat. So how do I prepare for that moment? And like, what do I do? Do I email some friends and be like, Hey, like, you know, I'm going to be there tonight and I really can't have alcohol and cheese and grain. And, and I need your support tonight, like in helping me stay on track with my health. Like, so maybe we can go get a quick bite to eat after or like whatever, but just, I would become aware when it triggers, that was the word I was looking for. <laughs> get to know your triggers. So I would journal, like if I screwed up, I'd be like, okay, what happened? Okay. I didn't eat all day. And then I, I didn't like ground myself, my energy. And then I didn't ask for support. So like three things that I could have done that I didn't. 
what do I do? I instantly forgive myself because guilt is the lowest vibration. We like fuck guilt. Sorry, no offense, but like get rid of that shit and move on and just commit to doing it differently next time. Like you just learned a valuable lesson. You know, you have those three triggers plus others. The second I got to know what my triggers were, that's when stuff started getting effortless. Mm. So I would have like a, an awesome dessert that I, I knew I could eat sitting at home waiting for me because I knew I wouldn't be able to eat the dessert that everyone else was having. So mm. I just started getting much more calculated and like getting myself grounded. And, and that starts to feel, you know this, but like when you have those victories, like you start feeling like you're on top of the world, it starts feeling so good to treat yourself that way. So I, I love that. And I want to pull two things out of that. Mm-hmm. One, I want to definitely make sure that at some point and we can choose when to do it, Um, that we actually do the one minute meditation on here so that people can use this as a resource because I'm like, what's meditation? What is this breathing? What are you talking about? Right? Like if I'm pissed, I'm pissed, you know, that's what people are thinking. But the second thing is some people are at the part in their journey where they're not really, really confident with their healthy lifestyle yet. And it's a hard thing to do to be the weirdo that's like, oh, hey, by the way, I can't have all this food, so I'm not coming. So Talk about how to have that conversation with people. Um, yeah, like I don't, I just like, you know, we've, like I'm a recovery maniac and some of those like, like ways have, well, haven't lost. Mm-hmm. So I never was really the type to not go to something, but I, I probably like failed a lot and then learned how to do it in a way that worked for me. Yeah. So that was like my method and it might not work for everyone, but like, I eventually got to a place where I went to this mastermind in LA and um, I, I developed a new relationship with my body through this whole process of healing my thyroid to the point where I just like, I'm like, I freaking love my body. Like, I don't, I care what it looks like, but I care more that I feel strong and I have energy. That to me is like gorgeous, you know? And so I was like driving up to LA and I'm like, I'm so beautiful. And like before that would have been like conceited or vain. And that was like, like neither it was like this was like from a like a light perspective of like I am a gorgeous woman and so are all of you and like mm-hmm. owning that and so I show up and like every woman there is in we're in LA and they're all like fitness models and I'm like oh, oh my god like I haven't worked out in a year because I'm recovering from this health stuff and I was told by my doctor it was actually bad for me mm-hmm. at that point in my healing process you know and I sat down and I didn't really know it I knew like one of one and one and a half kind of of the women and the event that night is wine tasting mm. and like everything in my head was screaming, like you're, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like all the critics came up. And so I was sitting there and I was like totally having a pity party for myself because this wine tasting is going on. And I'm like, I can't contribute. Like these women are bonding and I can't contribute. And that's a certain point. I was like, fuck this shit. I was like, poor less. So I started sniffing and twirling and looking at the legs. I just mm-hmm. didn't taste it. So I could participate in like 75% of it without actually tasting it. And next thing I know, I'm like, this stinks like cheese. And then everyone's like, yeah, this stinks like cheese, you know? So like, I felt like a part of it. So I feel like finding those ways that you can still be a part of something, even if it looks different. And I talk to the women that I coach a lot about create new traditions. Like I was a baker. I can't, I can still bake a lot of my Nana's pies and stuff, but I can't eat them. So I started making new traditions around new recipes and you can find really amazing ones that are very tasty. They're very healthy and no one knows. So like I start creating new traditions to like more and, you know, more and whatever you need to. And then like, get back on it, girl. Yeah. And I love that. And you are going to, when you pick a healthier lifestyle, I think there's some acceptance that some people are going to get it and you might not hang out with those people. Like, I made a change like 10 years ago where I wasn't getting wasted every night. Like, so those people are not my people anymore and that's okay. Right. There was a process of like, Ooh, I'm in limbo and I don't have any new friends yet, but I'm in this transition to a better life. So I like that. Um, and then finding ways to be involved. So another thing that I'll do is I'll typically, I don't drink sometimes I will, but if I'm not drinking and I want to like hang out, cause it's weird if you're just standing there and you don't have anything in your hand. I'll put water, I'll get soda water and make them put lemon or lime in it. And it just looks like I'm drinking vodka. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm drinking vodka, right? You've probably seen some of mine. I'm like the freaking queen of mocktails. Like I like go to the bartender and I'm like, I want a badass mocktail. Make me (laughs) the fiercest mocktail ever. 
Yeah. And so then people don't know you're not drinking. And the other thing that I found, at least where I live, the bartenders love the challenge because they're so tired of making the same old drinks over and over yeah. again. Right? There's Mc that's cool. And yeah. you get something healthy with like green juice in it and like nice totally like, like fruit. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and some of them are really sugary and they're not they're not the best option, but mm -hmm. like you know, it's what works for me and my friend, um, my, my well, good friend of mine, she's really smart and she's in recovery. And at a point I talked to her about it cause I was just having trouble letting go of like those two drinks a week that I had been having. And now I can have some of those. And a lot of times I choose not to, but, um, I was just having trouble, like letting go of that ritual. And she was like, there's times where you just need to get yourself that big, fat, disgusting, sugary drink that you wouldn't normally have because that's such a healthier option for your body right now than that glass of alcohol. So that was like a treat that I looked forward to that was different, but I allowed myself to splurge on it as needed occasionally because it's not about being per perfect. Like we know what happens when we try to be perfect. We end up going crazy and eating everything and drinking everything. And you know, yes. it doesn't work. Out. That's why I always say I'm a per recovering perfectionist and I work with yeah. other recovering perfectionists. Like yeah. we all want to be like perfect, perfect, perfect. But then I'm like, no, we're going to break the rules. Like we're going to make our own things that we want to do and do whatever we want. And I think you're totally yeah. on board with that as well. Yeah. And like the more, you know, your body, like triggers body, whatever. It's like, I know the week before my period, I'm going to want a shit ton more food. So I'm going to eat it, mm -hmm. you know? And then I know the week of, I'm not going to like want as much. That's my body. Yours might be different. But like before when I didn't know my body to that level, which I, by the way, consider a spiritual practice, like understanding my body to the level that I do now. Mm -hmm. Um, before I would get so upset, like, Oh, I only plan to eat this today. And I'm, but I'm hungry. And and then I would feel wrong for wanting that food. So I just like intuitively eat now. Like what's my hunger level today? I'm going to eat to that. And yeah, there's days where I eat more than my husband. Who cares? There's days I eat less. Like, you right. know, like just listening to your, to your own body is the best guide. Yeah. And, and talk about meal plans too. Cause I know a lot of people want meal plans. Cause they're like, I want to just not think about it. And I want to just like somebody to tell me what to eat. What's your take on meal plans? I mean, Maybe they're good if you need to like get into like you've been really out of whack with your eating and like you need to get back into it. But I mean, ultimately, the best place is to get to is like to just be an intuitive eater and to like be able to go anywhere. I mean, I have like more food restrictions than freaking anyone. And I my thing growing up was always like I was not a picky eater. I could eat a little bit of everything and be OK. And so it really shook my eating identity to have mm -hmm. to change that. But then I realized I could still be the easygoing eater. I never stress out to see if like a meals, a menu's like gluten free. Like people are like, oh, is this a gluten free restaurant? I'm like, dude, it doesn't care because it doesn't matter because every restaurant's gonna have a good slab of meat and some and like some right. vegetables for me. You know what I mean? So like um I just got off track. But I think if you need that as a segue to understand your body, then that's great. But ultimately, like just checking in with your own hunger levels and like asking your body what it needs is going to be the best guide. But there's a lot of trust building that needs to go on before you get to that space. And yeah. I, we, we build trust and we get clear when we clear space inside, which is like I do it through meditation. Some people do it through exercise. But those moments of just clarity that we feel just like peaceful and like, you know, like our higher self kicks in and we're like, all right, we got this. Like that's. I, and, and I love, I love what you're saying because I feel the same exact way. Like absolutely being able to trust yourself and losing the guilt. Cause when you're on a meal plan, you usually feel guilty. If you have one bite of something that's not on your meal plan, that's yeah. where I was for a lot of years. Um, but let's dive into this. Like I have, some people have never experienced this like higher self that you're talking about. They're like, what the freak is she talking about? And I can remember the first time I heard this of like having a thinking self and like, like the self that thinks and all the thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And then there's like the watcher and like, there's two th things going on. I was like, what is he? It was, um, it was on Oprah. It was like super soul Sunday. And it was, uh, the guy that wrote the power of now Eckhart Tolle was talking about it. And I was like, what? Like, I couldn't understand what he was saying. I'm like, what yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. So let's say somebody's there right now. And this is the first time they've ever heard of like, you know, we always hear like higher self and like, your consciousness, what does it mean? And like, how can you experience it for yourself? Sure. Okay. Um, if I get off track, like bring me back in. Cause I, I don't know what I let it go wherever it's supposed to go. Okay. So 
no matter what like your religion is or whether or not you, you're religious or you're spiritual or whatever, I think we can all agree that whatever our source is, our source is a loving source, right? So whether it's God or Buddha or, you know, like universal energy, like whatever it is, all of that, we come from love. Like that's, we're, we're made after our creator, whatever that is. Okay. Which and our creator is love. Right. So when we are connected with our creator energy, okay, we truly understand the magnificence of who we are. Mm. And in that space, we feel beautiful and divine and connected and those fleeting moments in life where we're not worried about something where we know that there's something looking out for us and we have a sense of like who we are and, and that we're being protected and taken care of. And we don't have to stress out like we usually do. Like, have you ever had those moments where it's just, you just feel in sync? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just came from a huge event like that where we, we did a guided meditation in a room full of 600 people. Yeah. And okay. It was like just, and we like held each other hands and, and yeah. that's, that's out of my comfort zone. I wouldn't have done that a year ago, but right. because of this journey I'm going on, I'm open. I hugged 40 people, Molly, you know, yeah. I hugged 40 people and I was like, <laughs> I'm hugging you. so it was a really good experience. But when we came out of that meditation space, like I heard, I am strong. I am beautiful. I am loved. Like I am fearless. I didn't care what anybody around me thought at that point because I was like, I'm great. And you guys are all great. We're all great. That's you. Connect, that's in your zone, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. There's a million different things. Your inner guidance, your higher self, you know, your inner Beyonce, like whatever you want to call it. Like when we're in the flow and we feel that inner beauty and we feel just that like ability, like we can do anything because we're taken care of and we don't have to worry and stress out those fleeting moments. That's your truth. Mm -hmm. That is your, that's our truth. And what happens is our ego gets in the way and separates us from that. And so in Kundalini yoga, which is the, you know, methodology that I practice, we say we have three minds, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, we are not our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We are conscious beings. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. This physical body is a vessel that's allowing us to communicate and have this human experience, right? But ultimately, we're spirit that came down to, you know, do some job for God, like whatever, you know? Um, so the more we can become aware of what's going on inside, the more we can consciously choose. And so we say we have a negative mind and that's kind of like the fight or flight response where we um, want to be protected and safe. And so we might, you know, cut someone off in traffic because we think otherwise we're going to hit the barrier or, or, or we might be getting worked up about a guy across the conference table from us who like, you know, we think is going to attack us. And so we, so our negative mind starts going, our negative mind can also be like, you're not good enough. You're never going to succeed at that. All the doubts that come up, that means we're separated from our higher self, right? So the negative mind, then we have the positive mind, which is like, yeah, I got this. Woohoo. Like, like cheerleader type right mm -hmm. um and that's great because that can bring us forward in life you know the negative mind can protect us the positive mind can bring us forward but either living in either of those two minds too much creates chaos in our lives because we can't just blindly think that everything's going to work out fine and like not put any effort or work or whatever into it we can't always be pessimistic about everything because then we're gonna we're gonna not follow through and you know so then we have the neutral mind and the neutral mind is being able to observe our thoughts. And I read the Eckhart Tolle stuff and I'm like, what does all of this mean? I don't get it. Um, one of my favorite books is um, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. I feel like he takes these concepts and breaks them down into a level that you can actually digest and like apply in real life. Mm -hmm. But I read that book and I was like driving down the highway and I'm like getting all worked up and totally pissed off in my own head um, because of some work thing that had been going on that day. And I, that was the first time I caught myself. I was like, wow, I'm driving down the street and I'm like angry and my like heart is racing and like I'm about to sweat. And if someone were to look from the outside in, what they'd see is a nice girl driving down the highway on a beautiful, sunny Southern mm -hmm. California day. Man, does she have it. But instead of like enjoying that moment, I was fighting some dude in my head. Mm. And so the second I became aware of that, using that like neutral space, I was like, I started laughing at myself. 
you know? And so then that aggression that I was feeling internally just totally melted away. So the more we can step into be the witness to who we're being in the moment or how we're behaving, um, the easier it is. Like, instead of that, I could have kept down that rabbit hole of like, you know, anger and everything else. But instead I caught myself and went back to work with a totally different energy than I would have had otherwise. And see, I want to dive a little bit into your story a little bit more too, from originally you came from the corporate space. So I want people to really tie, tie together this negative energy and the effect it has on the body. Cause they're like, yeah, okay. The guy pissed me off. Like some people are still in this space where they're validating, like being angry and like validating staying in negative energy. I'm not saying you can't be angry, right? Like we are going to have emotions, but validating negative energy. So your story from, I, I know, I know you told it before about coming from the corporate space and kind of how you had health issues. Do you yeah. think that was related to energy? Oh my God. 1 million percent. Now that I like look back because I was, I mean, I was, I was fortunate in some ways. I was like, really, I worked in human resources and I was naturally really good at organizational development. And I had the, that, the formal training and a master's degree and everything. But, um, I also just got promoted really quickly at a young, really young age. And so um, I was at the executive table with seven other men, no other women every day for a few years. And um, when I started having, I would just be exhausted. Like I would have no energy after work and it's, and it's not necessarily male, female, but we do tend to embrace energies of our gender. Like, we need each other to balance. It's like yin, yang, masculine, and feminine. We each have masculine and feminine energies, but my, that energy is being so drained because I was surrounded by these men, you know, all day long. And they were just <laughs> like, some were awesome. Some were really draining and some would challenge me because they didn't want a female, you know, like being smarter mm-hmm. than them or whatever. And when I got diagnosed with, um, I had Hashimoto's hypothyroidism adrenal fatigue and I had leaky gut, including parasites, H pylori, and like, I'm forgetting stuff. Mm. And when they, they said that my levels were so low, like when I got my cortisol levels, they basically said like, you should be hospitalized right now. And this isn't something that just happened. Like this has been going on for many years. What were you doing like five years ago? And I was like, Oh my God, like that's when I was at the conference table. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it does affect us. And that's, I was so out of touch with my body at that point, because for me, the goal was like to get ahead and make more money and to be skinny. And so I didn't, my body was like an annoyance to me. Like, Mm. you know what I mean? I had no respect for it. I just wanted from it and I gave nothing to it. Mm. It's a really shitty relationship to be in and my body had enough finally. (laughs) And I think a lot of women, like let's say they're 30, 40, 50 years old, have been treating their body like crap for that long. So yeah. hopefully they're watching this and they're tuning in or they're watching the replay. Yeah. Let's guide them. Let's guide them. Cause they're like, okay, I get it. I've been treating my body bad and maybe they're open to realizing maybe that's why my body's not responding. Cause I've been giving it negative energy and I want it to be skinny and, but I'm mad at it for being fat. So mm-hmm. that's not a good journey to take yourself down. So if they're in that space right now, what would you say the first thing for them to do is? First thing is you need to start building trust with your body. Um, you will effortlessly lose weight when your body trusts you. Like that's what happened to me is my body healed. Like I was the biggest I had ever, I got married a year ago today. We're going out to dinner after this. And oh, I was, anniversary. I didn't know <laughs> anniversary. That's awesome. I was the biggest on my wedding day that I'd ever been in my life. And it was totally out of my control. It was a hundred percent inflammation related to the disease I was experiencing. It had nothing. To, I was eating cleaner and probably less than I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And I was swollen as fuck. Mm -hmm. And my body just wasn't budging. And I know this is a little different than what the women are experiencing on your thing, but I think the lessons are parallel. My body wasn't budging. And I kept like talking to my doctor and health coach, like, I feel like there's something else. I feel like there's something else we're missing. And it wasn't medical. It was a hundred percent that my body's like, I, my body wasn't ready to heal because it thought that I was going to go back to criticizing it and, and behaving like a maniac. And so I had to relearn like how to have a good relationship with my body. Mm-hmm. And so I brought myself and I bring clients to this. It's one of the first things we do. So I would recommend you ladies do it. Like, what is your current relationship with your body? When's the last time you said something nice to it? What's the last five things you have said to it? 
if your body was a friend, would your friend still be around? Cause mine definitely would not have been because all I did was take from it. Even when it was depleted, even if when it was saying to me, I'm, t- I'm too tired, I would push it. I would, um, work out when I was exhausted. We don't need intense workouts all the time, but I was raised to believe that was the way, like that's what you have to do. No, you, we don't. We, we were better to check in to see what our stress level is and then maybe go for a five mile walk instead of like a two hour long crazy berries boot camp or whatever, you know? Um, so there's the process of just understanding what is the current relationship and then what is the relationship that you want? And what do you need to do to get between those two states? For me, it was a lot of forgiveness and ugly realizations <laughs> of like what had been really going on. Yeah. And I felt really bad for how I had treated my body. I gave it nothing. Like even eating was an annoyance for mm. me. Like ugh, I have to find food. You know what I mean? Like that type of energy and everything's energy. Like you, maybe you've seen some of these studies, but like if we talk to water and we tell water, like, I love you. You're amazing. The water under a microscope looks like big, beautiful um, snowflakes. And if we tell that water, like, you're ugly, I hate you, it looks like all crazy and ugly. Mm -hmm. We're 80% water people, right? Mm -hmm. And so even like intention with food, like if you need to have a brownie one day, have that brownie, but be like, this brownie's amazing for me and I'm going to enjoy it. It's the guilt energy that like really hurts us. And that that shame energy and the negativity with your body. So it's, I mean, I literally spent three months with people on this. It's hard to explain in just an hour, but like get honest with what your relationship is right now and then pick a new vision for what you want that to be. Because when your body starts trusting you and you stop eating, um, when you are doing positive things to clear your emotions. Emotions are not bad, like you said. Mm -hmm. It's healthy to get angry. But what you do with that anger is the deal breaker, right? Mm -hmm. So you go eat a chocolate pie and then feel guilty about it, or you have maybe a piece of it, and then you journal out your feelings, and then you're clear, you know? Mm -hmm. like So what what are the ways you're maybe abusing your body right now, and how would, what, could you do differently? And when you think of it in the context of it being a friend, it gets really easy to like understand. Yeah. What you can do different. And I think it's really as simple as like, start where you are. So like you can buy a book on Amazon. Like I read the, my first, like my first personal growth book was the power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. And I was like, but I was embarrassed to read it. So I would like hide it. Cause I'm like, I don't want anyone to know that I'm, that I have problems. So I'd like secretly hide it. And so you start with something, right? Like, and then your journey will take you where it's supposed to take you. It's so crazy, right? Like you find the people and connections like we met. I'm like, Molly, we're friends. Like that's just, that's just how this is working. Yeah. The universe connects us to people that we need. So if you're watching this, it's like, okay, you're meant to be here. So go take a step now in the right direction and do something like reach out to Molly or reach out to me or go buy a book or something. But taking that first step, I think, and not feeling guilty, right? Because sometimes mm-hmm. you're like, I yeah. suck. So like when you're like, I have so much work to do. And like, we all feel that way, right? Like when you level up, you realize you're like, okay, I'm better. But now I have this next level that I want to get to. Yeah. So it's getting through the guilt or like the shame of like, Ooh, I was living pretty bad there for a while, but at least I'm better than I was. Totally. And remembering, like, if you take nothing away from this, like, guilt and shame are, are useless, worthless feelings. Like, anger at least motivates us. Anger has an, an, an energy of motivating. Mm-hmm. And those other ones do not. They don't, whatever system you believe in, your creator, universal energy, n- none of those, no system out there wants you to feel guilt or shame about anything. And that's how you know you've separated from your truth, mm. is when you're feeling guilt or shame. And so your job in that moment is to return to a place of love. And Mm -hmm. how do you do that? You know, like it's prayer for some people, it's meditation for others. It's whatever works for you is the right answer, you know? Yeah. And if you're lucky enough to have a pet, like a dog, that's like the easiest one. I just cuddle with my dog. I know you have miles. Yeah. Instant energy booster. He's at my feet right now. Totally. I'm my cat. That's awesome. Yeah. A hundred percent. And like, you know, you're doing the best you can. And I always just, I looked at every like 
fuck up along the way, which was a ton of them of just like, this is just a lesson. Like, what do I need to learn here? And like, where, it, how did I get to that place? Because I, there were like many points, you know, where I could have intervened and chosen differently and I didn't. And, mm. and so how, what could I do differently next time? That's all it is. It's just freaking information to like help right. you make a better decision next time. It's nothing to beat yourself up over. Yeah. And you're the rule breaker girl. Like for the women I work with who don't have eating restrictions, my rule is like, nothing's off the table. Like mm -hmm. have a little bit of everything because then it, we, we over time create all these crazy food rules. I don't even know where they've come from, you know? And, and we, again, like get externally focused. We see someone else who just went like, you know, paleo. So, and they lost a bunch of weight. So maybe we should be doing that. And yeah. like, that's the most annoying thing. Like your body will let you know if you pay attention to it and you connect with it, you have a relationship with it. What food works for you. It's not about what other diets people are on, you know? Yes. That's what I, that's exactly like a summary of what we teach in the better method of like, Oh, is it cool? You gotta put, yeah. Like you, you're perfect. Like you've got to put the work in, which most people don't want to do. Right. They want a diet. They want a meal plan. Um, so the people who are in the better oh. method get that. And they're yeah. working through it each week being like, okay, does this work? No, that doesn't work. And they're okay with that. They tried it. It didn't work. Or they're figuring out, I will try something else. So it's a process. It's a journey. That's totally what we're talking about here. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I had like, cause I had, you know, so much going on with my health. Like I had a big journal and I would write down every day, like, what I ate. And then I would call it like the effects of it. But like, was I, did I have brain fog? Was I, were my joints hurting? Um, did I have like enough energy to sustain me for three to four hours? Cause we should after we eat, you know? And right. so that was how a lot of how, like I figured out what food works for me and that takes time. Like it just takes time and it in reflection and going back and going, okay. Um, I had no energy today. The last time I had no energy, what happened? Oh, I didn't like drink any water for me. That was like one of the biggest things, you know? So it's just like, that's different for other people. It's just like getting to know what your thing is. Yeah. And I want to, I was just listening to podcasts. Like I said, the podcast was playing. I was just jamming out, but I got a good tip because I was like, this is perfect. What we're going to talk about tonight. Um, it was the guy, the creator of seal fit. I think his name is Mark divine or something. He has a podcast called unbeatable mind. He was talking about this process that he used called recapitulation. And I just, to be honest, wanted to say the word on here, but it's basically saying cool. instead of, he said, go back to like when you were born, like as far as you can remember, and think about every good thing that you've done and every like good choice that you've made and focus on that. Like that's, and I don't know, you could be this, the input cause I just heard this tonight, but that could be like a positive uplifting thing rather than going like, Oh, I'm so bad. I have so much work to do on myself, but going through the process of thinking the things you've actually done right in your life. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, I just, I was going through my uh, training program and I had to, um, record um i had to look in the mirror for five minutes and say everything i love about myself and it's that exact thing it's like i love that you know three years ago i was able to blah 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 and it's not just like accomplishments and achievements but it's like who you are to mm. um those qualities that are unique to you and i had to record it like um just an audio as i was doing it we're supposed to like continue listening to it and it's it's hard you know i, I mean, was just thinking that like i was like yeah five minutes yeah like, most people, if they're in a really like just negative mindset, I can remember, I couldn't think of one thing that I liked on my, like on my physical body. And I had to like meditate on my wrist. Cause like, well, my wrists aren't fat. Like that was the only positive thing that I could think yeah. of at that time. Yeah. But starting with one thing, five minutes, I'm going to take that challenge. I'm going to do it. I'm do it. Yeah. It. I mean, it's like a pretty amazing process. And, um, you know, the reality is like, you know, these statistics, but it's like, we have like, like 60 to 80,000 or 90,000 thoughts in a day. And 80% of them are repeated from the day before. And 90% of them are negative. Like, hello, we need these, we need these interventions yes. <laughs> to help ourselves along. That's why I'm such a believer in meditation because it clears the garbage in our brain before it gets into our subconscious mind. And a lot of what we do, um, I use EFT emotional freedom technique. It's an energy psychology technique and you can google it there's tons of videos out there on eating and stuff um, but the reality is the majority of our um, belief systems develop between the ages of one and six in our life mm -hmm. and so we are like these robots that don't even understand 
the reasons that we're like going for that donut and we can't say no to that donut is because when we were like a child, that donut brought us comfort or whatever, you know? So there's mm-hmm. it's like an oversimplified example, but um, sometimes there's things that are going on underneath the hood that we don't need to fully understand, but we can use these techniques like the one you mentioned um, to overcome them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you've got to put, I feel like it's the same as eating, eating good food that's healthy, nutritious. You actually actually have to put in good thoughts because the negative yeah. thoughts are just there, right? They're just there. They just yeah. come in. We have and you to just notice them. Yeah, we have to put in the good thoughts. So I want to. I know you. I know you have to go to dinner. So I want to um, do whatever you want to do. If you want to do a meditation, if you want to do EFT, and just leave off us with something um, for a couple of minutes at the very end here. Yeah, let's just do breath of fire. Um, so this yeah. is just a breathing technique. It's a Kundalini breathing te- technique, and this is the one that I would use in the bathroom so I wouldn't stab my hand, my friend's hand, <laughs> um, and. It oxygenates the whole bloodstream. And so when you think of it, our organs, like especially the endocrine system for women, a lot of eating stuff is hormonal too. And so this purifies, like when there's something going on with our hormones, you know, we're secreting these hormones into our bloodstream. And so um, it can help during like our cycle or whatever. But, um, but also this breathing techniques helps, it helps with um, releasing addictive tendencies. Mm. So that's why it's so powerful to use in the moment. So I do this, like when I'm getting ready and like putting on makeup, I'll be doing this to just kind of like get my system ready and like fire it up. Um, and it's that glass of wine because what it does is it stimulates your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. And so your sympathetics, like the fight or flight and the parasympathetics, like the relaxation and restore. So I always say, this is my new glass of wine because that glass of wine, like I mentioned it, you want it to like bring your energy up and you want it to chill your energy out from the week. Mm-hmm. So it's really easy. Animals don't like it. Like Miles tries to headbutt me. So if you have animals around, just like stand up or something. Um, so it's super easy. So, and you can do this. Like I'm always like going to the bathroom and clear your energy, you know? Um, so all it's rapid, rhythmic and repetitive and it's two to three cycles per second. So it's fast. Okay. And the easiest way to learn it, if you've never heard of breath of fire is to actually just pant like a dog. So I'm going to do that for a second and do it along with me. Okay. Do you feel your stomach naturally pumping as you do that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So it's that pumping motion. So you can always do that if you want, but like there's a more sophisticated way of doing it, which is um, you're just going to do that breathing motion, but you're going to do it through your nose. So inhale, it's like inhale, your stomach pumps out. Exhale, your stomach releases in. Okay, so do that one more time. Inhale, stomach pumps out. Exhale, stomach releases in. And I'm gonna I'm gonna exaggerate it so hopefully you can hear me, but it's literally two to three seconds um, cycles per second. So, and I'm gonna stand up so you can see it's literally a pumping in your navel. This is our power center, right? If you want to close your eyes, you can focus on your third eye. It'll help ground you. Only time you don't want to do this is if you're pregnant or the first two days of your cycle, it could be too extreme. Pregnant people just do long, deep breathing. If it's your cycle, you can try it. If it feels fine, do it. But if not, do long, deep breathing for the first couple of days. Um, so do that for three minutes and you'll be like, woo, <laughs> there you go. Um, just, I would say start with one, with any, with anything, start small and go bigger, but don't do more than three minutes. Um, unless you're, you have a regular like yoga and meditation mm-hmm. practice. Um, if you do that every day, it'll change your life. I love it. It's I love naturally, it. It's so simple. It's one minute. Everybody has one minute while they're yeah, ready in the morning. One minute. Like do it while you're like, you know, I don't know. It, then the, the good thing too, is like, if you need help, like just make it part of your routine. So do it while you're in the shower every morning or like, mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to take, make extra time in your day. You do it while you're driving. Don't get in a car accident. But yeah. you know what I mean? There's like, there's things you can do when you're making your coffee or whatever it is. Like do it then. And I think retraining yourself from your natural habits is going to take a little bit of focus. Like maybe yeah. you always come home and sit on the couch with a glass of wine, but that's now your trigger to say, hmm, maybe I'll try this breathing thing or, yeah, you know, it's, or before you turn on Netflix, let's try a breathing thing. Cause you might be going to Netflix for five hours to distract yourself from something. 
So yeah, I, I like one minute. This is a big one to use when in those moments when you're feeling that temptation to do something that you really don't want to do. Um, do the breath of fire. It'll help break that addictive thing mm. that's going on inside. And then ask yourself, what is the need? You know, mm. um, the chocolate was going to give me comfort because I had a shitty day. And so, so there's something else I could do to process that. Yeah. But the, the breath of fire takes the edge off for me to be able to get into my neutral mind with it. I love it. That helps so much. Okay, Molly, where can we find you? I know you have stuff going on. I know you have a group. Um, but what yeah. else is going on? And do you have anything, any meditation stuff coming up or anything like that? Um, yeah. So, I mean, my website's mollyhamill.com, M-O-L-L-Y-H-A-M-I-L-L.com. Um, I think on the 19th, I'm going to be doing, um, a, a, like two hour thing at the yoga studio I teach at, or we're going to be live streaming it. And that's going to be about throat chakra, which is our expression center. Mm. A lot of women have issues there because I need to come able- to that one. Yes. Yeah. So you can live stream that. Um, I have a monthly meeting every month where I teach new meditations, a manifesting meeting and manifesting to me is just, I mean, it's a buzzword, but it's just really like intentionally focusing on what we want to create. I know you're a regular there. Um, and then right now I'm just working with one-on-one clients. I'm, I'm, I am not relaunching anything until 2017. So, um, I do have a meditation program though that you could access anytime. So if you are brand new to meditation and you want to check it out, it's like, like I am like an East coaster to the core. You could hear me swear. Like I drive fast. Like I, you know, meditation was never something I thought I would get into. I got into it cause it helped me get rid of my anxiety. And so I became a believer in it. Um, so this meditation program I have, it's called naturally high because I feel high and I love feeling high <laughs> after I meditate. And so you can access that. I think it's like $49 and, and it, it guides you through like, what the heck is meditation really? And how do you do it? It's like breaking it down. All the things I would have wanted to know, when I learned how to meditate, like someone told me to do a naked meditation and I was like naked, I have to get naked. And they meant like naked sound, like just listening to the sounds. So it's like demystifying all that BS. So you don't have to be scared and think it's freaky yes. like I did. Yes. And I've done your meditations. I love them. Like I don't really want to listen to anybody else because I'm like, I need Molly. I need Molly to guide me. So I still have them and I'll listen to them. I think I just did one, this one this week. Cause I'm like, why am I not meditating right now? I like lost, yeah. my, I lost my, my way. Right. And then, um, you know, Oprah and Deepak, they do those 21 free med- free day, um, free 21 day meditation things. Those are cool too for, I think for newbies. So awesome. Yeah. Perfect. And you have some stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. Like if you go to my website, there's, you just, there's usually link through blogs. There's some stuff there. I think you have an EFT one that I've seen on there that I loved If People are still EFT. And then, oh, and then yeah, my Facebook group, I, I took a little mini vacay for the last couple of weeks cause I was just regrouping after my big launch, but, um, I'll be back and fiercer than ever. Um, um, I, you know, I jump on and do a lot of free meditation there. So if anyone wants to join, it can feel free. It's the radiance revolution. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Molly, for coming on on your anniversary. Of course. Um, have an awesome dinner. I'm so excited for you. You're going to have an awesome night now. Thank you for uh, the little glitch in the beginning for hanging out with me. Oh, no. I was just like, am I on the wrong link? No, it's totally yeah. cool. I, you, all you ladies are so fortunate to work with Cammie. She is the brightest light ever. So Thank you. Boy. I wish I could hug you for real, but virtual hugs. From virtual a- love. <laughs> all right, my dear. Thank you so much. All right. Awesome night. Okay, bye.